very strict um, mm -hmm. parent, but mm -hmm. see, I am a parent. You, on the other hand, I wouldn't say you're a parent. You hurt my family. I was there to help your family, not hurt them. I will never forgive you, and I've never said this to anyone in my life. I hate you. I hate you. Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grimm. Today I have a new series starting for you, another classic television show that I've been wanting to react to and have gotten tons of requests to do. That's right, we're doing some wife swap. And I figured, you know what? Let's start on the very first episode they ever made. This is the Pitts family versus the Policcio family. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. But if you've never seen this show before, basically they pin up two different families against each other. And yes, they are usually polar opposite type families where the wives themselves will fly across the country and swap swap places with each other for a good solid week, living by the rules of, you know, the family that they're visiting, and then they stay for another week and change the rules around to something more of their style. And as you can tell from that intro, things get heated in this one. I am not sure what got this lady so angry, but we're going to find out, all right? So without any further ado, make sure you drop a like and a comment letting me know you want to see more of this to help me out in the algorithm and to really, you know, give me the inspiration to keep doing this series. But without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? Household chores. I clean my whole house daily. Ken cleans the bathtub twice a month. Oh. Put things in their place and life becomes much easier. Yes, but does it become much happier? So to start things off, they both have just arrived to their new houses and they are reading the kind of rule book that they each wrote for each other. You have this lady with the more Karen style haircut here, who is the original wife of the Policcio family, which are total neat freaks so far. Like from what I can tell, literally this woman's entire existence is to clean their house all day while everyone is either away at school or even home. Her only goal in life is to be an NPC and to clean her house. And then meanwhile, you have this lady with the bigger blonde hair over here, who is the original wife of the Pitts family. And it looks like they have about a hundred different freaking animals. There's just animal poop around the house. It doesn't really sound like she's very keen on the whole cleaning thing. So I already know this is just perfect television right here because they're about to be in like the worst possible environment for each of them for the next week. So now the time is upon us for them to meet these new families. You have the clean freak meeting the Pitts family here. It goes absolutely smoothly. Look at that handshake. Wow. Wow, you cannot get much better than that. And now the Policcio family is meeting. Everything is just awkward here so far. I don't know how I'd feel, especially if my parents were just like, yo, we're going to be on TV. Not only are these cameras going to be in front of your face, but uh, yeah, you're going to have a new mom for two weeks and she kind of sucks. Like I would just be bummed, but these kids seem like they're handling it pretty well, I guess. That's our dining room. Okay. Uh, we haven't had a table there in two years. Mm -hmm. So we just pick up whatever, whenever and eat it wherever we want. This lady not even having a freaking TV tray to eat on is her absolute worst nightmare right here. Look at how uncomfortable she is. She's like, uh, do I put my glass on the floor where all this dog crap is or what? Like, then she goes and hides in her room and complains. I can already tell this lady is going to be taking this much worse than the other woman. I don't know why. It just seems she is so strict and this other family is so laid back. Does she get a bath every night? No. Um, depends yeah. on what's going on. If I know I'm working early the next morning. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a cluttered messy, loud environment to have a homey environment. And you can see her just losing her mind right here is this toddler who honestly looks a little bit grimy. I'm not going to lie. Like this kid looks like a little snot nosed toddler, like what you'd expect. She's like, uh, so does she get bathed every day or I'm just going to take it as a no, just judging off the uh, smell coming off of her. <laughs> like this lady's already so rude, dude. Yeah, the kid's dirty, but I mean, it sounds like this family is just super chaotic and maybe you can help them, you know, schedule and organize more time to bathe their freaking child. Capri doesn't allow sleepovers at her home, but it's a regular sleepover night for the Pitts boys, and 10 friends have arrived. And bro, all of a sudden during filming, they have 10 of their homies come over. Like, this has to be the number one spot. Oh my God, what I would do to go back to these days. I know they're just staying up, listening to music, playing Xbox. Like, that is literally the prime time of your childhood. So if you are experiencing this still in your life, make sure that you are freaking aware of how special that is, dude. But of course, this strict, uh, you know, Policcio mother over here, she's really not having it. She's like, I can't sleep. They're playing drums and guitar until like 2 a.m. And I, I'm just going to start crying anytime soon. Like, she's just against these kids having fun at all. I heard screaming, yelling, jumping, running. I thought it was 
disrespectful and inconsiderate. And it wouldn't have been tolerated in my home. It would not have been tolerated in my home. Yeah, that's because you don't want your kids to make a single peep. That's right, you're about to see this, but these kids even explain that her house, there's expected to be almost no noise coming out at all. Back then, you might be Skyping with your friends, probably not quite yet, but let's just say like an Xbox Live party. You can't even be loud in your room or even at a talking level for the most part. Like already, I know the house is way dirtier, but I'm siding with the pit so far. I'm kind of gonna be basing this series on which house I'd wanna stay at, and definitely so far, it's the pits. Maybe I'm biased because they have a drum drum set and a guitar available. That does sound pretty fun to just jam out, but you know, it's way less strict over there. Still, they could use some rules. When I woke up, I could hear my own thoughts. I think if a pin dropped, I would know exactly where to find it. I'm actually afraid to touch anything or spill anything. I feel like I'm in a glass house. Mm -hmm. And she explained that perfectly there. Like this dude literally expects his wife to make him breakfast perfectly in the morning, every single morning. There's expected to be no noise. You're almost supposed to not have existence in this house. And everything about this household feels so toxic to me. Like this guy also just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Maybe it's the mustache, but we're gonna see how he ends up. Uh, he, he's already creeping me out though. And the way he's so particular, I mean, look at this clip of him rearranging things as if she didn't do it correctly. She didn't get the right freaking bagels. And he has a little fit about it. It's ridiculous. Like, like, I would not want to live in this environment. I'm sorry, but this is way too hostile. Uh, we just drink coffee through straws. Does it work? Uh, it may or may not work. You don't know if it works. You just, it's yeah. a habit or it's, it's sort of a faith-based thing. <laughs> Nothing you read. <laughs> the priest thought about it. And, and of course the wife made up this idea, but this dude's just following it. They claim that because they bleach their teeth very regularly, they can't drink coffee directly, so they just sip coffee with straws. Look, each, each family's gonna have their little quirks, but so far, this creepy weirdo dad and this super strict mom, this family is the absolute worst, all right? I don't care how many pets are taking craps in the hallway. I would much rather live in that other house than this place, where you have to sip coffee through a straw, even though you just have it in a normal cup, simply to keep up the image of having good teeth that would not be humanly possible to be that white without, you know, going to the dentist anyway. So everybody already knows you're going to the dentist, all right? You don't have to be so extra with this stuff. You know, if it works, that would be great. But I honestly, I, I think it's kind of pointless. Oh, and he looked mad when she said that, but it really doesn't make sense, dude. You're having the coffee that's absolutely going to be coating your teeth if you drink it like at all, all right? So you can sip through the straw all you want and think that you're special, but really it just makes you look dorky. Also, did you see how he had to move over the cloth because it wasn't quite right? Like everything about this house is just neurotic, if that's the word, and I dislike that so much. Let's go back to the fun place, shall we? No, I'm not saying perfectly clean. Um, and you know what? You can have a fun house and you can have a clean house. You don't, one doesn't necessarily exclude the other. And yeah, I don't know if this lady realizes that her statement literally goes both ways because her house is absolutely devoid of fun as well. So both of these families, as you can see from just what we've seen so far, need an absolute reset and need to find some middle ground so that they can, you know, take some notes from each other and realize, hey, on one case, I could have a lot more fun. And on the other side, hey, I could have a little bit more organization and cleanliness and it would probably go a long way. I think Bambi unloads the dishwasher, plays with the kids, but that's all I've found so far. I think she does. I don't think it's a fair situation. Okay, and for real, this is actually something that is totally call outable. Yeah, Bambi, the other wife that's a lot more fun loving, she a little bit slacks on uh, the motherly things, you know what I'm saying? Because this guy is working a full time EMT job, which, if you know what those people do, that is one of the most grueling, honestly underpaid, underappreciated jobs out there. He's doing that day in, day out, probably working mad long shifts, possibly 60 hours a week. And then he comes home and has to clean up what he can and also take care care of the kids. I don't really know, uh, you know, if this is super accurate, but it seems like the mother really isn't doing as much and instead is just trying to be a friend to her kids and a friend to her significant other. But that's not really something you do. You got to also carry your own weight, especially if you are a stay at home mom. There are certain things that you can help out with during the day when you have much more time. I mean, that's just objectively true. I'm not saying that you have to follow this nuclear family like BS where you're just home slaving away cleaning like this other lady. Like, again, you have to find a balance, but really she should be helping out her husband more because this dude works his butt off. Like, honestly, this guy is an all-star dad. This is really bad coffee. Uh, really bad coffee, okay. <laughs> there are some very small things that can get me unhappy or upset. Bambi asked me how the coffee was. 
And I said it was pretty bad. And I meant it. It was pretty bad. It's too weak. That's what you're trying to tell yeah. me. Politely. Yeah. Uh, politely. I don't know if that was very polite. This dude honestly seems like an absolute jerk off. The way he just flipped out over this coffee and is getting super angry. Like, he, he literally set up his camera in his bedroom to make this little confessional. He's just sitting there like, if there's one thing that can really just really make me angry and make me wake up on the wrong side of the bed, it is poorly made coffee. And I had to tell her to her face it was pretty terrible because she is a crappy barista. Let's just say she should never work at Starbucks. <laughs> With this little rat smile as well, like, I am not getting good vibes from this dude, okay? I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but it seemed like my initial judgment is pretty freaking accurate, all right? Calm down over the coffee, buddy. It's too quiet. It's too gloomy. I feel boxed in. I don't like the routine. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable here. It seems impossible to be truly happy here unless you're happy just with yourself and not like a giving person. Look at this, man. This lady has lived this life for like two days now. She has cleaned the minimum five hours of house cleaning that this other lady assigned her to do because apparently that's how she finds fulfillment in her life. And this lady's losing her mind. She is on the verge of crying because the pressure is already too much in this house and you can't make a sound while you are just slaving away, cleaning your house all day. That is no way to live, okay? I don't know why this family is so old school and just annoying, but honestly, they are the bigger L family in this series so far, all right? Right. I mean, are you happy with the way everything is? I'm happy with my family. Clutter is everywhere. Do you think she's a good housekeeper? I think she doesn't have enough time to be a good housekeeper. Did not expect this, but the lady the very night before they make the new rules uh, from the Policcio family confronts the dad of the Pitts family here and is like, look, you realize how little your wife is doing around the house and how much you're having to pick up the slack? Do you hold resentment over that? Like, I don't know how well that's gonna go over seeing as it's his wife you're talking about. And no matter, you know, how true it might be, he's gonna be old school and be like, you're attacking my wife and my family. I just guarantee it. That's gonna be his response to this, but let's see. Your house is, is the dirtiest house I've ever been in. Today she showed her animal side. Her claws came out. She attacked the family. She attacked the house. Matter of fact, she insulted us. <laughs> and he took it pretty much how I would expect him to take it. But also this lady is terrible at being eloquent and, you know, trying to get her point across in a respectful way. She just comes off as very snooty and Karen-like. So her hair is pretty accurate here. I mean, there was a better way to go around that than basically calling his wife a bad wife all around, all right? You could tiptoe around the issue a little bit more in the future. There's a prairie dog. Where's all of them? The dogs are still out back. Right in here, guys. Right? Hey, guys. They're not here all together. So that's right. It's time for the rule switch. And this lady's first move is to get rid of almost all of their pets. Not get rid of, of course. They're being held somewhere. But still, that is a wake-up shock to the family. And I already know they're not going to be taking this very well. Seeing as they're a very animal-centric family. Again, this is almost like a sanctuary. Their house right here. So that is a bit jarring for them. This house is the dirtiest house I've been in in a long time. Every surface, every wall every picture everything's getting clean okay i thought she was wearing a referee outfit but no that is actually a top that this woman used on this show thinking that it was drip so again uh, minus 10 points for this family the Policios. i'm sorry you're lagging behind by about 100 points at this point all right and i love the juxtaposition here this lady takes away all their pets and is like we're gonna deep clean the whole house that's their punishment and the other lady's like okay we're not gonna schedule anything and we're just gonna live spontaneously and don't be afraid to make noise you know in the room and and be community driven and you know talk to the people in your house that is literally the other family's punishment if that doesn't just show how whack their household is I don't know what is, all right? Because she's literally making it less of a prison. That's how this whole house feels. And what's really insane is actually this is a pretty big thing. She invites a pet into their house and gets a kitten for the oldest son who wrote on his door that he really wanted a cat one day and his parents wouldn't let him get one or I don't know what the situation is. So that is a bit jarring. I, I will admit getting somebody a pet they don't want is, is a pretty big thing. But let's see how the dad handles it as he's not handled anything very well. They won't be responsible for that animal, and it'll fall onto Caprice and I to take care of it. This is a significant complication in our lives uh, that I don't fully appreciate. Dude, this whole family sucks. This dad sucks so much, dude. He literally sees his children jumping with joy and they finally have some happiness. They have a pet, a cute little cat, and he instantly just thinks negatively of it. Like, my kids are pieces of trash, even though we make them, you know, follow our every rule and be perfect the entire day. They're not gonna be perfect when it comes to this cat, all right? They're not gonna take care of it. It's gonna fall onto me and the wife, and we're not gonna wanna have to support this cat. It's a big upheaval in our life, and I do not appreciate it. Like, how about you just sit back and appreciate 
appreciate your kids being happy. All right. Appreciate your kids being happy for once that they don't have to live in this prison and they finally have a little bit of entertainment, AKA a pet. All right. You don't let them hang out with their friends in the house or even online. You don't let them make phone calls with their friends. They have to not make a peep in their little jail cell rooms. Take the L you weird looking dude and just understand that your kids want a freaking cat. And the issue I have is bringing the cat into the house. I really have a problem with that. I'm pissed, okay? But that's not what you do to a kid's uh, mind. And he's literally like, I'm mad. You don't do that to a kid's mind. You don't get them all excited and happy because I'm gonna be the bad guy and have to take away the happiness. Like, do you really have to take away the happiness, dude? Why can't you just understand that they're happy and you know, make some rules and if they don't follow them, make sure that they know that, you know, this can't continue to happen if they don't follow the rules. And there you go. That's like how a normal parent would do it. How come everything is empty? It's oh like nothing my here. God. What the hell did they do? Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they got worse. And this oldest son is my favorite in the Pitts family. They come home from school and realize that she has taken a lot of the junk and clutter out of their house and put it into storage. Again, did not get rid of the stuff, but just as kind of clearing the house of this bad energy and this uncleanliness that is making it seem like the house from Shameless. And honestly, it's good for them. I think they need to get rid of some of this clutter, but they obviously don't take it well. And this kid is just not having a good time, all right? He was always our best friend. I could talk to him. I could tell him anything. But now I just feel like, you know, He's my father. He's a parent. I can't tell him anything anymore. And this kid's instantly like, my dad's a freaking op. I can't tell him anything anymore. He's trying to make me go to bed at 10 p.m. so I have a good sleep before school. I hate his guts. Like, this is what happens when you have absolutely zero boundaries and why you need to find that, you know, middle ground, hopefully earlier on in the kid's life, because it's going to be much more jarring for them to, you know, finally have some boundaries set up and some rules in place. It's going to be very difficult for these kids to follow. But, you know, hopefully he can go about it in a way that makes them understand, you know, it's for the best for them in their future to have a little bit of discipline and, you know, a slight guideline to their day. And then the insane thing, you cut forward a couple days and they're having a straight up party at this other house. She added some colorful decorations to their house they were allowed to invite friends over it looks like the oldest son has his girlfriend over and the dad is playing them a concert on his acoustic guitar in the living room if that isn't a w transformation of this family i don't know what is like bambi's out here killing it honestly and this family letting loose is making them way better looking in my eyes like now it actually seems like there is love in this household and some actual appreciation for one another instead of just avoiding each other and trying to be quiet as a mouse so we're gonna fast forward a little bit here it's the final night they both have actually very good final nights here uh, the mother of the Policio family sits down and eats dinner with them and they agree that they're going to bring the stuff back into their house and the other animals, but it's definitely going to be less cluttered or at least a focus on being a little bit more livable, but they still want to have that vibe, of course. And then the other wife brings out the Policio family to this nice restaurant and it's actually a jazz restaurant where she inspires the husband to go up and jam with the band, which is very cool. Like the way she encourages this family is just so much better than the other lady, in my opinion, and kind of just goes to show that being a little bit more appreciative of the funner nuances of life can be a lot better personality wise than being just a strict, rigid, boring person that follows all the rules. But now it's time for the mothers to square off against each other. And this is where things are going to get a little bit vicious. I'm guessing that Bambi is not going to take lightly to her animals being taken away. But let's see what happens when they all get, you know, put back to their original families and they can finally sit down with each other and share their thoughts about each other's families. Stop. Your house is like a museum, like a hotel. It's so cold when you go in there. When I walked into the house, I felt dead. My house is full of life. We talk, we communicate, we have fun. Mm -hmm. Bars, Bambi, bars, dude. She's spitting right now. Absolute facts, too, because this house that the Policios live in is just absolutely devoid of any happiness. And I've said that a thousand times, but that is not the environment you want your kids to be in, okay? It's gonna make them resent you when they realize that they had to live and grow up in pretty much a memorial home. Um, parent, but see, I am a parent. You, on the other hand, I wouldn't say you're a parent. My opinion is you're a friend. That's wrong. And look, I get what she's saying, but again, this Karen over here, I'm not even, you know, committing her name to memory because she's pissing me off so much throughout this episode. But the way she phrased that is just so rude. You can't just say to someone's face that actually does, you know, parenting things and be like, you're just not a parent in my eyes. Me, I'm an ideal parent. I actually know what I'm doing. You, you just seem like you're kind of winging it and you're more their friend. Like, yes, that may be true, but there are better ways to say that without sounding so classist almost. And just like you think lesser of this woman because she has some home that's smaller and less expensive than yours and has a bunch of animals she takes care of for fun like get over yourself woman and cut your damn hair what was your biggest fear of going to a place before you even knew where you were going 
No animals? I came home from work Wednesday, and we have... Oh my God, the way he just set that up. Apparently she already knew that whoever they swapped her with was going to try to get rid of the animals for at least, you know, the time she was gone. And just the way that she already had that as her worst possible scenario, and that's literally what happened, she's about to pop off. So let's see that happen. All I did was try to show you, if I took these things out of my life, this is how I could be. That's fine. If it's not for you, fine. They're not things. They're family members. They're pets. It's love. You don't oh, mess me. with that. She is popping off, dude. Oh my God, this lady messed up. I love that the husband, the annoying coffee sipping through the straw ass husband is just not responding at this point because he's such a little, you know, quiet little buddy over here that is so afraid to pipe up even in defense of his wife that he's just sitting here like, yes, uh, she, she got rid of your animals. I'm sorry. I didn't know that was such a big deal. You don't do that. You don't take a family apart. You took them out of their home environment. I will never forgive you. And I've never said this to anyone in my life. I hate you. I hate you. Holy dude, this is getting heated. And this coffee straw sipping husband is still just sitting here looking super uncomfortable. He looked a little bit more comfortable playing with that jazz band last night than he is sitting here watching his wife get grilled for something she absolutely should be grilled for. I totally feel for this lady. That was kind of an annoying way to go about it. But of course, that was probably the show's producers asking her to do that, if anything. But still, I, I think this lady looked down on this family simply because they had pets. And that is disgusting to me. But yeah, they're actually isn't much more to the interview here. I think they kind of cut things off after it started to get really awkward, but it seems like finally, you know, each house has achieved a little bit more balance. They do this follow up where they see where they're at in the future, and it seems that the Pitts family is eating dinner with each other. They're doing things like enjoying home cooked meals, or even if it's takeout pizza, just eating at the table together is a good way to wind down and decompress from your day and spend some more time together, which they already were a very friendly household, but this is just seems like they have a little bit more rules and a little bit more things in place to really, you know, separate the line between friend and parent. And that's what they needed, all right? Also, I'm hoping this lady is doing more around the house. It sounds like she is. And that is very helpful for the dad, who again is kind of just doing this super dad thing and working an insane EMT job, as well as supporting his family. As for the Policios, I mean, the son has all new drip. He's got cool shades on. It seems like they're letting him express himself a little bit more fashion-wise, even though it may be very 2003. The dad's out here playing guitar on the porch. They seem like they're more friendly. And the best thing of all, they actually can hang out with friends and have friends over now. How cool is that? I mean, this mom gets to shoot hoops with her son's friends and try to be cool while being cringy the entire time. But you know what? That's a part of life and the experience of life. And the best thing is, I really thought she was going to get rid of it. But the cat is still here and she actually loves the cat. Who would have thunk it, all right? Both the dad and the mom turned around on this cat and they actually realize it's a good thing in the home to have an animal that, you know, is there to support their family. So it seems it was a happy ending for both families. Wow, this was a long episode, but again, I want to start this series right. I want to make sure you guys enjoy it and we get a good view of these episodes as I absolutely am loving this series already. I don't know if I said in the intro, I've definitely watched a couple episodes of this growing up, but it would have been in the later seasons and I really wouldn't remember it by now with my scroll brain. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you drop a like and a comment down in the comments below, letting me know that you want more. Make sure to check out the Patreon where I post bonus face cam reaction content that I simply cannot post to YouTube. Huge thanks to all my supporters over there. Andres, who hopefully I am pronouncing your name correctly. Man, it's stressing me out knowing that I might not be, but that is the Grim Squad Overlord of this month. You also got people like Emily, who is a Grim Squad Commander, and Yashira and Wellner both showing mad support. I have a little bit of a surprise going up on the Patreon there shortly, so make sure you guys check that out if you want to. Maybe get some peeks at some early merchandise, that's right. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching, and until next time, I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, peace out.